Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're going to be testing a new feature that Nvidia has just enabled in their latest drivers, and that's support for FreeSync monitors. This was first announced at CES 2019 to the surprise of the community, I think. I'm not sure many people were expecting Nvidia to back down from their G-Sync tower, but they have. And finally, those with Nvidia GPUs can now use Adaptive Sync with a wide range of FreeSync monitors. Now you might be thinking, wide range, that's not right, Nvidia only announced that 12 monitors would be supported, but that's actually not the case. Nvidia's announcement of this feature was a little misleading in my opinion, so I'll do my best to clarify it here. Nvidia's support for adaptive sync displays now comes in the form of four tiers. Yes, four tiers, so it's pretty confusing. At the top is G-Sync Ultimate, the new name for G-Sync HDR. Monitors that are G-Sync Ultimate certified have Nvidia's G-Sync HDR module inside and support basically the full suite of HDR features. G-Sync Ultimate monitors include Include the Acer Predator X27, the Asus ROG Swift PG27UQ, and the new HP Omen X Imperium 65. One step down is regular G Sync. These are the monitors that we've had for many years now that include a G Sync module but don't support G Sync HDR. These are the Adaptive Sync monitors that have always worked with NVIDIA GPUs and NVIDIA GPUs only, and the ones that command a higher price tag than their FreeSync counterparts. Then we get down to G-Sync compatible monitors. These are FreeSync monitors that Nvidia has certified to pass their strict G-Sync performance metrics. They don't have a G-Sync module, but they do support the VESA Adaptive Sync standard, so they also work with AMD GPUs. With the latest Nvidia drivers, these monitors now work with Adaptive Sync on Nvidia GPUs with Adaptive Sync enabled by default. So far, Nvidia has announced that 12 monitors are G-Sync compatible. You can see the list here. If you own any of these monitors, and install the latest driver, Adaptive Sync will be enabled automatically and you can use it just like you would with any other G-Sync monitor. Nvidia claims that G-Sync compatible is still inferior to regular old G-Sync. They have this table here showing that G-Sync monitors are certified with more image quality tests, have a full variable refresh rate range, variable overdrive, and are factory color calibrated. However, there is really no reason why a G-Sync compatible monitor couldn't also be factory calibrated or have a full variable refresh rate range. Nvidia just isn't requiring these things for the monitor to receive a G-Sync compatible sticker, while G-Sync monitors must have those features. There's also a fourth tier that Nvidia only talks about briefly, and that's the ability to use any FreeSync or VESA Adaptive Sync monitor with an Nvidia GPU via a toggle in the Nvidia control panel. Nvidia claims that this is for VRR or variable refresh rate monitors yet to be validated as G-Sync compatible and says that when enabling the feature, it may work, it may work partly, or it may not work at all. And of course, Nvidia wants you to think you have to purchase a G-Sync compatible monitor to know for sure that it works. So despite Nvidia announcing the G-Sync compatible program with just 12 supported monitors out of 400 tested, in reality, every adaptive sync monitor is now supported. All you have to do is enable the toggle and away you go. Sure, only certified monitors are guaranteed to work, but Nvidia isn't restricting you to just G-Sync compatible monitors. Every FreeSync monitor should work. Now, Nvidia, they did spend a bit of time during their keynote and on the show floor attempting to convince people that the G-Sync compatible program actually is necessary because apparently non-certified monitors are rife with issues. They showed off monitors that were flickering and blanking and basically used those examples to tarnish the entire FreeSync ecosystem. Nvidia were effectively saying that the G-Sync compatible monitors they've certified do not have these issues while any non-certified monitors will have issues, which is why you need to purchase a G-Sync compatible monitor. As soon as I saw Nvidia talking about these issues, I immediately called BS, and that's because these issues they showed off are not issues with FreeSync or the VESA Adaptive Sync standard. They are not issues inherent to the technology. Instead, they are issues with monitor manufacturers producing a crappy product. Uh, it's no secret that some FreeSync monitors, especially earlier models, aren't very good and do indeed have issues like flickering even on AMD GPUs. But those monitors are pretty much just rubbish. In my opinion, if you receive a monitor that flickers or has blanking issues, it's a defective product that should be returned. 
there are plenty of monitors that don't have any such issues, so I wasn't a fan of Nvidia claiming that non-certified monitors will definitely have these sorts of problems. Firstly, a quick look at how exactly you enable Adaptive Sync support for non-certified monitors. Once you've installed driver version 4.17.71 or newer, all you have to do is open up the Nvidia control panel, browse to set up G-Sync, then select your FreeSync monitor. From here, make sure both the enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible checkbox and the enable settings for the selected display model checkbox are both ticked. The second checkbox doesn't appear if the monitor is G-Sync certified. Then all you have to do is click apply, your monitor will restart and Adaptive Sync will be enabled. In some cases, you might need to go into the global 3D settings and select G-Sync compatible from the monitor technology drop-down menu, but across the monitors I've tested, this wasn't necessary. It's also important to note that FreeSync has to be enabled in your monitor's on-screen menu. Some monitors have a toggle that allows you to turn FreeSync or Adaptive Sync on or off. You'll need to set it to on to get the option to enable Adaptive Sync. One final note about this before we get into the test results, G-Sync compatible and FreeSync monitors only work with Nvidia's Pascal GPUs or newer. I tested a variety of monitors with an Nvidia GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, but all Pascal cards should also work. This is different to G-Sync monitors, which work with GPUs back to Nvidia's GeForce 600 series. I believe this is because Pascal is the first GPU architecture to support Adaptive Sync as well as G-Sync, while older architectures supported just G-Sync. So far, I've tested seven FreeSync monitors with an NVIDIA GPU. All of these monitors I've previously tested and found to work flawlessly with AMD GPUs, so no flickering, blanking, or other issues. They pretty much work fine. I'd have loved to test more FreeSync monitors considering there are over 500 models on the market, but these are all the monitors I have on hand right now. Still, I guess it's a pretty good sample size. The goal for testing was to see if there were any differences between Adaptive Sync enabled and disabled with an NVIDIA GPU, and if there were any differences compared to the monitor attached to an AMD GPU with FreeSync activated. This included testing the monitor across a range of refresh rates to see how it behaved inside and outside the refresh rate range. The first monitor I tested was the Acer KG251QF, a budget 24-inch 1080p monitor with a 30 to 144Hz refresh rate range. This is a great monitor for the price, and it's safe to say I found no issues with the monitor working with Adaptive Sync enabled on an NVIDIA GPU. No flickering, no blanking, nothing. It worked exactly the same as when hooked up to an AMD GPU, so that's a success. The second monitor was the BenQ EL2870U, a 4K 60Hz panel with a narrow 40 to 60Hz refresh rate range. This monitor also worked perfectly, although the refresh range is too narrow to support low frame rate compensation or LFC. So when frame rates dropped below 40 FPS, Adaptive Sync no longer functioned, and either tearing or stuttering was introduced depending on whether you had VSync disabled or enabled. This is expected behavior though, and also happens with an AMD GPU. Again, I'd class this as a perfectly working display and as a success. The next monitor was the Viotech GN24C, another 24-inch 1080p monitor, this time with a VA panel and a 48 to 144Hz refresh rate range. Again, this monitor worked perfectly, and due to the large refresh rate range, it also supported LFC. This was one feature I was curious to see whether it worked on NVIDIA GPUs or not. If NVIDIA was being lazy, they would just let Adaptive Sync deactivate when frame rates dropped below the 48Hz refresh window. However, that's not the case. Instead, NVIDIA is properly supporting LFC with monitors that should support LFC, so when frame rates drop below 48 FPS, the monitor runs at a multiple of the frame rate and frames are duplicated. For example, if the game was running at 37 FPS, the monitor would refresh at 74 Hz and show each frame twice. So it's nice to see one of the key features of Adaptive Sync that Nvidia already uses for G-Sync monitors also works here without any corners cut. I tested two other monitors with similar results, the AOC C27G1, which is a 27-inch 1080p monitor with a 48 to 144Hz refresh range, and the Viotech GN32LD, a 32-inch 1440p monitor with a 48 to 144Hz refresh range. Both monitors also worked perfectly and had functional LFC. 
Then we have the Philips Momentum 43, a 43 inch 4K monitor with a 48 to 60 hertz refresh range and HDR support. There's no LFC here due to the narrow refresh window, but otherwise this panel worked as expected with no issues. The good news here is that you get adaptive sync support even when HDR is enabled. It's not a matter of choosing one or the other. HDR has no impact on adaptive sync capabilities, which is good news for those interested in an HDR monitor, but didn't want to buy a G-Sync Ultimate display. Display. There is one FreeSync monitor I tested that didn't work with Adaptive Sync on an NVIDIA GPU, but this isn't a huge surprise. The Viotech NB24C only supports Adaptive Sync through HDMI, while NVIDIA GPUs only support Adaptive Sync through DisplayPort. AMD GPUs can do Adaptive Sync through either HDMI or DisplayPort, so this monitor has functional Adaptive Sync with AMD GPUs, but not NVIDIA GPUs. The lack of adaptive sync over HDMI will also disappoint those looking to pair an NVIDIA GPU with the range of FreeSync capable TVs that have been hitting the market in recent years. Most FreeSync TVs only have HDMI ports, so again, NVIDIA GPU owners will be left out for now. So of the seven monitors I tested, six worked flawlessly as I expected. The one monitor that didn't work was never gonna work because it required FreeSync over HDMI, which Nvidia doesn't support. It's also good to verify that low frame rate compensation and HDR work in conjunction with Adaptive Sync on Nvidia GPUs, just like on AMD GPUs. So there's no real difference between the FreeSync implementation on Nvidia and on AMD graphics cards. I expect what I found here will be the case for the vast majority of FreeSync monitors. If the monitor is known to work perfectly with AMD GPUs over DisplayPort, so you know it doesn't have inherent flickering issues, it should also work perfectly with NVIDIA GPUs when you enable the toggle. If the monitor has issues on an NVIDIA GPU, it will also likely have issues on an AMD GPU and should be returned. I guess a question some people would be asking is, should the monitors I tested to work perfectly actually be certified as G-Sync compatible? And it's hard to say without knowing NVIDIA's strict testing guidelines. However, any monitor that doesn't support LFC will automatically fail NVIDIA's testing. And there are loads of FreeSync monitors with that LFC, including two that I tested today. But I think it's important to stress that you don't need to purchase a G-Sync compatible monitor to get adaptive sync with your NVIDIA GPU. Buying a G-Sync compatible monitor will guarantee a working experience and guarantee support for features like LFC, but regular FreeSync monitors will work just fine as well, at least based on what I've seen today. Don't fall for the BS that all non-certified monitors will have issues because that's definitely not true. As for a few loose ends, I don't have any monitors that actually qualify as G-Sync compatible, so I can't tell you how the experience differs compared to non-certified monitors. However, I expect the experience to be exactly the same considering the experience with non-certified FreeSync monitors is already excellent. Again, the G-Sync compatible badge just ensures a certain level of quality that you may not get with, say, the cheapest and crappiest FreeSync displays. If you're wondering about input lag, I measured no appreciable difference to input lag between Adaptive Sync enabled and disabled on NVIDIA GPUs. Enabling Adaptive Sync does not appear to increase GPU side processing time, which is also the case for AMD GPUs, so that's good news as well. You can use multiple Adaptive Sync displays hooked up to a single NVIDIA GPU. You're not limited to just one Adaptive Sync enabled display. However, Adaptive Sync will only function on one monitor at a time. I don't expect this to be an issue for most people, but say you have two games running on two separate Adaptive Sync displays, only one of those monitors will be fed an Adaptive Sync signal from its corresponding game. I also haven't tested any FreeSync 2 monitors because I don't have any on hand. Uh, because FreeSync 2 is an HDR pipeline exclusive to AMD that allows the game to talk directly to the monitor for lower latency HDR processing, I don't expect this functionality to work with NVIDIA GPUs. However, this won't stop regular HDR from working in conjunction with Adaptive Sync on NVIDIA GPUs, as I've already mentioned. So those that own or are thinking of buying a FreeSync 2 monitor will get HDR functionality, just not FreeSync 2 HDR functionality in the limited selection of games that support it. Finally, I think NVIDIA supporting FreeSync is well, it's nothing but a good thing for the industry and consumers in general. It did take NVIDIA quite some time to do so, and I'm not a fan of NVIDIA basically calling all FreeSync monitors garbage in the process, but this will bring cheaper Adaptive Sync monitors to owners of the most popular GPUs on the market. I really don't see a reason anymore to buy a G-Sync display if there's a FreeSync equivalent.
And I guess that's it for this one. If you also have a FreeSync display and an NVIDIA GPU, I'd love to hear how you're finding the experience, so leave a comment below. I'm also interested to see if there are many people with displays that do have issues with Adaptive Sync enabled, especially if those issues are not present on AMD GPUs or aren't a known issue with that particular model. As always, you can subscribe for more hardware unbox content. Give it a like if you enjoyed the video. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat, and I'll catch you in the next one.